carrying nuclear weapons can sweep over a variety of routes and drop bombs on any important target in the United States. The threat of this destruction has affected our way of life in every city, town, and village from coast to coast. These are the signs of the time. Well, 
civil defense measures accordingly. But such a gigantic undertaking is not feasible. Instead, we build representative units of a test city with steel and stone and brick and mortar, with precision and skill, as though it were to last a thousand years. But it's a weird, fantastic city, a creation right out of science fiction. A city like no other on the face of the earth. Home, neat and clean and completely furnished that will never be occupied. Bridges, massive girders of steel spanning the empty desert. Railway tracks that lead to nowhere. For this is the end of the line. But every element in these tests is carefully planned as to its design and location in the area. A variety of materials and building techniques are often represented in a single structure. Every brick, beam, and board will have its story to tell. When pieced together, these will give some of the answers and some of the information we need to survive in the nuclear age. At varying distances from ground zero, the point of detonation, numerous experimental elements are assembled. Underground structures and facilities of various types play their part in duplicating the complexity of the modern city. The vast research program includes testing such items as covering materials, paints, varnishes, plastics, also various fabrics and samples of clothing. On the outskirts of our test city, a synthetic forest determined a protective value of foliage and fruit. To give us a ringside view of the event, high-speed cameras stand like lonely sentinels, ready to photograph the hurricane of fury. Before leaving the test area, a final check is made on the multitude of instruments and technical devices which will record a variety of blast phenomena for future study. Now, with all the elements in place, our test city is complete. From the air, its center will appear as a bullseye to the bombardier at HR. On the morning of shot day, official observers, technicians, and scientists gather at News Knob to await the momentous event. This is the payoff for months of planning and preparation on the part of the Atomic Energy Commission, the military services, civil defense, and other test agencies. As part of an experiment to observe the phenomenon of atomic detonation at close hand, military personnel and defense officials dig in within a few miles of ground zero. After a final briefing from the officer in charge just before each hour, the men disappear into their boxes. Every precaution has been taken for their safety. They're told to crouch low, shield their eyes, and remain down until the signal to rise is given. Now the moment of greatest anxiety, waiting those last few seconds.
But the problems of rescue caused by blasts and fire along the periphery of damage remain the same. In these fringe areas, civil defense training can save many lives. Lessen damage from secondary fires and help establish emergency facilities. Now in a helicopter, the radiological safety men measure the amount of radiation. When readings indicate safety for human beings, the troops are led in for a tour of the area. By double-checking with Geiger counters every inch of the route, men can now enter safely and confidently areas spotted with radiological contamination, an indication of the progress made in understanding atomic hazards. And thus, each test adds to our growing fund of knowledge. For it is only by investigating and experimenting that we get the facts to keep our military and civil defense program up to date and effective. Every bit of twisted steel makes its contribution. Blackened ruins and ashes of a structure at another chapter. The shattered wreckage of the dwelling offers an eloquent testimony. Piece by piece, like the parts of a jigsaw puzzle, our story is assembled, analyzed, and evaluated. Then the survival facts are made available to you through your local civil defense program. In the thermonuclear age, Civil defense, like military defense, must be flexible. It must develop and grow, even as the forces that threaten our existence. And so until men of goodwill have turned this awesome power to peaceful use, let us recognize the threat to our way of life, the threat to our survival.